so if we go through your here okay to some extent the stuff that is out the readings have been I've updated the readings so please make sure you complete the readings okay these are back up along with the video and the class notes which are pointers to what is being covered all the decision problems okay so I've given you this kind of structure you will not generally not find this kind of structure in any textbook okay but I've given you the structure because you're just you know uh, like babies being thrown into the water so I've given you some kind of structure whether so, so uh, and these decision problems are clear and I've given you a structure as to how you're going to solve the decision problem. As to how you're going to take an eyeball view, that is that you have to get used to. Because an eyeball, as far as, far as uh, where is the optionistics? Oh, that means this is here. Okay. I forgot to, I don't know if I pull this back, will it actually see? I don't want to anyway now we are stuck return to previous page they've given us an option I made a big mistake I should have actually loaded that back I'll just switch to my uh, just temporarily actually I made a big mistake I shouldn't have done that anyway I think um, it doesn't matter let's look at a shorter eyeball chart okay let's look at this chart here's your eyeball chart okay you know how to get there if you want to change the ticker you change the ticker here just go here and just enter whatever you want to enter Facebook enter that okay and then the numbers will change as you will see right you can see the numbers have changed and then you come here and take out the wall chart the eyeball chart okay so you can see the eyeball chart here so you have to take a view in, on this and as far as the view on eyeball is concerned as you know generally you can take views using either a fundamental approach or a technical approach okay but in eyeball as far as the eyeball views are concerned it's very difficult to get a fundamental view because you don't have the raw materials okay to form a fundamental view so the eyeball view almost you have no choice but to use a technical approach to forming a view on the eyeball which means you're just looking at the trend of the eyeball and taking a view on which way it's going to go because the fundamental information that uh, you know the market structure that is not even actually fundamental information uh, it's really uh, it's kind of very difficult to put it together so it's much easier to take a just a purely technical view but this 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 problem is always going to remain like how do I know whether it's going to go down or up well you never know anyway and no matter how much you study and no matter what uh, predictive model you use you're never really going to know anyway the degree of accuracy and reliability is not really going to change okay so this is the basic uncertainty of life and this is the same thing that applies to even the the markets okay so here now what's going to happen to the dollar swiss no one really knows and you'll never really know anyway okay it's not possible to know that is, even if you understand that that's actually a big realization because many people don't understand that they keep on experimenting with more sophisticated models and things like that thinking that they will find the right answer but no predictive model is really going to work so if you once you understand that you have a better it's almost like a coin toss basically it's almost like that okay maybe you can get a little bit better accuracy but that's not so important because if you ride your if you ride your winners if you cut your losses quickly and if you when you have a profit if you keep riding the profit you can still make money remember that you remember the uh, the system edge calculation right you remember the system edge calculation yes, so the the point I'm trying to emphasize here I got this I really do not like to see this sign so let me see if we can even if I mean I don't even know if this is going to be able to connect over here because remember we had problems yeah yeah this is uh, so fast this is the firewall that they've come up with I don't know why this optionistic site is blocked actually they have come up with categories you know fresh strange categories so even new sites are blocked so if I'm connected sorry I actually need uh, yeah I need to tell them to um, bypass the firewall 
Oh, okay. There, I didn't know there was a Chrome ex inbuilt official Chrome extension. Sir, so there are actually sort of official extensions. There are extensions named as VPN. Okay, VPNs. Okay. 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 So instead of having a specialized VPN software, you are talking about a VPN as a extension to Chrome. Achha, I didn't know that you had Chrome uh, extension type uh, VPNs. Okay. So now we have our Microsoft chart back. Okay. So this works. Now, unfortunately, this is a problem. I don't really need this for the rest of the class. And now that I've got it, I'll go back to. I don't really need anything else. Mm. No, this is okay so far. Let's see if it causes the problem. Then we'll 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 go back to it. I have to upgrade my geo now to from 2 GB to 3 GB because it's uh, sometimes I have to work with it the whole day and uh, okay we'll get this fixed don't worry okay so what was I saying we were talking a little bit about the let's go back to this we drifted a little bit we were talking about I suddenly started talking about your predictive models okay. so why is that now I just want to give you a brief idea I don't want to make you feel depressed that we don't want to we never know how to uh, we'll never know how to where did I put system edge um, yeah. so this is the previous yeah you remember this I don't want to make you feel depressed because I was saying that since she's talking about predicting okay so we started the discussion from here we started the discussion from here let's say we have a longer eyeball chart now what I'm trying to do is to try and form a view on the eyeball to figure out whether I want to be a buyer or seller of options okay so I, how do I form a view on the eyeball it is pretty difficult to get information on what options are trading in the market you can make a fundamental connection but by and large you have to use technicals uh, a sense of how the market is going to move so this instinct that's that's why I've asked you guys to think of it as a surfer, as uh, like a surfer, right? Like a surf surfer doesn't have a PhD in uh, fluid mechanics, but a surfer has a pretty good feel for the waves, right? So that's why I've told you because you really don't have this is not physics, so you don't really have any reliable models that are going to work. Okay, so you have to develop your instinct, but your instinct can always save you. Okay, your instinct can always save you. So uh, therefore, uh, so don't. Uh, I would strongly urge you to rely a lot on your instinct because a lot of the time what happens in the MBA programs is we teach people quantitative techniques and things like that so people are almost being given the subliminal message that instinct is not important I would give you the counter message especially when it comes to markets economies etc especially when it comes to markets if you have been watching markets for a long time okay so you should learn to trust your instinct everybody you you heard that concept of the sixth sense right yes. everybody when you when you uh, keep on watching something for a long time you will develop a feel for it it's a natural human uh, ability that everybody has okay if you're watching something intensely for a long time if you're watching the Microsoft stock prices for a long time you will develop a feel for it you will develop a, if you're really intensely into it you will develop a feel for it and that feel I would strongly urge you to you should trust that feel because that is actually a very high quality and that is uh, pretty much the most high quality kind of analysis that you can get in the markets okay so I would strongly trust you you can use other tools also you'll obviously use risk management tools the main message I'm giving you here is don't disregard your own instinct about markets markets economy anything that you're following very closely very intensely over time you'll develop an instinct for it and learn to trust your instinct this is very important you should trust your instinct like Kujbu's instinct will be different from Gulati's instinct and that's fine both of you should learn to trust yours you shouldn't worry about what she is doing you should trust your own instinct okay so this is an important message I wanted to give you are you following what I'm saying yeah so yeah is it regarding the if we are referring to an eyeball or is it regarding the overall price or the uh, market uh, see in it, it refers to both the statement that I'm making about trusting your instinct that's why I said follow uh, you follow the market think of it like a surfer okay here in option trading you have to take two important you have to take some other views also but mainly the major views that you have to take are the view on the underlying asset which way is it going and the view on the eyeball for that particular asset right so here if you're trading Microsoft options you have to take a view on the common stock of Microsoft which way is it going and you have to take a view on the eyeball of Microsoft options which way is that going this quickly red line which way is this going to go that also you have to take a view so both these things I would say 
you can work on some other more uh, structured methods also but override that is not mutually exclusive with instinct that does not necessarily exclude instinct you use your structured methods also but you also listen to your instinct about what the what it says about the market right so uh, for instance so so that's what i'm saying is, is does it answer your question okay so instinct is very important because generally the message the reason i want to emphasize this message is the general message that goes out at mba programs and any kind of things is that you should use quantitative methods this that okay but i would say that though this is not physics so you can't rely on quantitative methods so therefore the role of instinct is very important okay if you are flying a plane I, even in a in the in the planes they say some pilots rely on instinct like there was this case you remember where in the U, uh, in new york there was a bird hit there was a plane landing at new york and there was a bird hit so the plane obviously was now it was not functioning properly so what the pilot did was he uh, landed in the hudson river so he basically took over he disregarded all the rules and all that and he just because he was a very experienced pilot so he just told the airport that uh, the emergency staff that we are going to be in the hudson and he landed that plane on the hudson river and nobody no injuries not even any major injuries so that's all that is a lot of instinct so even at the even at things like plane which is 100% science there is no real instinct there is 100% science even there they are using instinct successfully okay so so therefore in the markets definitely you should trust your own instinct okay and so yeah so uh, what was i saying right now i told you something about the i just want to emphasize something i said that uh, you know because you will not have most of the models that you see eventually will have only maybe 50 55% accuracy so that should not make you feel depressed because go back to i hope you haven't forgot forgotten what system edges remember what system edges yes arora system edge does anyone remember yes sir what is it use the mic where's the mic do you remember what system edges can you explain in simple terms what system edges if i say my system edge if i say that my x and again system edge is always can be both ex ante and ex post okay let's say for last one years my dollar swiss trading system if i'm referring to my dollar swiss trading system for the last one year the ex post system edge is 1700 dollars what does that mean so that means that your total uh, risk uh, that will be divided per trade uh, is amounting to 1700 dollars whatever that amount is uh, so you will distribute that amount per uh, transaction and that risk amount only you will take no 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 that's not what system edge means anybody else remembers you've forgotten all these basic important concepts of trading managing you're going to look at you know asset management positions anybody else remembers what system edge is this is an important term in in the markets yes mayak it says here you can see here what system edges you can, i'm looking at the formula no no now you're telling me <laughs> just you're telling me the you're reading out the formula but what is it actually now this is this is similar to what kind of uh, this is similar to what kind of concept in statistics when i discussed this i said it is is it is uh, it should remind you of a particular concept that you study in statistics what is that concept hmm? mathematical expectation correct so the statistical concept that is identical to system edge actually identical mathematically identical to system edge okay is mathematical expectation okay in statistic when you are taught in statistics when you are taught this concept you are taught is taught this concept as mathematical expectation that is summation pi xi right so here we use for pi we use the uh, percentage losses and the 1 minus percentage losses okay for the probability of loss and 1 minus percentage losses what aurora what is 1 minus percentage loss another way to express 1 minus percentage loss is percentage wins okay so percentage wins we don't write separately okay so this this model of mathematical expectation how many uh, exogenous let's do some revision this model of math mathematical of the system edge this model model of the system edge how many exogenous variables does it have puneet is my question clear 
here we are modeling system edge okay so this model of the system edge how many exogenous variables does it have one minute let put it answer and what are they does this formula look unfamiliar to you you want me to increase the font size now you are doing big data no you want to see big data <laughs> Big <laughs> data. Yes. Yes, Puneet. Any idea? Is my question clear? Three. And what are they? Loss. Hmm? Loss. Loss. Okay. Then? Yeah. No, percentage win and percentage loss are not separate. When you're talking about exogenous variables, you have to always talk about if you wrote this equation as if you said that there are four, uh, you're correct that you're three, that there are three. Percentage win and percentage loss are not uh, separate independent variables. Here, the independent variables here are percent uh, average loss, average win and percentage loss because given the percentage loss you can figure out the percentage win so you don't state you don't say that this has four independent variables this are only three independent variables because the fourth one can be expressed as a function of the of a constant and the uh, third independent variable so therefore you don't mention it as a separate independent variable okay so this has three independent variables so just we are doing some revision on your basic model theory and all that right so the reason you should not feel depressed so what was i saying i was saying that you have to trust your instinct uh, and by and large no matter what you do in terms of highly sophisticated predictive models uh, mathematical models they will still be they're still susceptible to having a very high error rate so that should not make you feel depressed because you might feel depressed and say that no i can't trade because i can never be getting it right okay why see the structure of this equation first understand what system edge is what tarun said about system edge is not correct the mathematical treatment is correct system edge is the mathematical expectation of your trading system okay system edge is the mathematical expectation of the trading system and what is mathematical expectation in terms of it's a weighted average when I taught you mathematical expectation when we revised it did I say that it's a it's a probability weighted average outcome yes, okay it's just a weighted average where it's a instead of just giving a simple average weighted out average a uh, simple uh, outcome average outcome you are weighting it by the probabilities okay so system edge is basically the average profit of your trade of your system okay so in this system if I say that my system has uh, if we go back here okay we go back to your Where did we calculate all this stuff? There is No, this is cap markets. It's also wherever it is. I don't know why it's not there. Um, cap folder is not here. No, this is your cap folder. No. Here, it must be here. No, not even here. Not here. The one. Yeah, something like this. Okay. Yeah. So if you have this, so system edge, what does system edge basically mean? So this is also an important concept. Just because you have a very high, uh, the chances of getting a very high percentage win figure is very low. Okay. Most people have very low percentage win figure, but that does not mean you should get depressed. Okay. And forget about trading. Why? Because look at this structure. So first understand what system edge is. Okay. System edge is the average profit of your system. Okay. This 75,000. Okay. Now, what is the uh, gross profit? Look at the gross profit of the system. This is very important, which is now we are talking about this here. 
So 18 minus four and a half, essentially, can you see this? We are calling it gross profit because if you tally up all your losses, it's four and a half million. Yes. If you tally up all your winners, it's 18 and a half million. Okay, and your, uh, therefore your gross profit is 13 and a half million. Is that okay? All right. Now, what is another way? So this is one way of arriving at your total profit, uh, your gross profit. Okay, so if you take this and then you divide it by the invested capital, which is here. Okay, invested capital is $5 million. Okay, so if you are looking at your return on invested capital, the way you get that is by taking this gross profit, by taking this gross profit and divided, divided by your invested capital, $5 million. This is clear. You remember all these terms? Yes. Sir. Invested capital. Yes. So basic figure that one we uh, one of the most important figures that we report for an asset management operation for any fund is that what is the return on invested capital, right? And how do you arrive at that? Basically, you take the to the, the the gross profit and divide it by the invested capital. So you get the total return on ROIC here. Where is the ROIC? That we can uh, just write it here. We can take the the gross profit and divide it by the the invested capital okay what happened here this has to be a is this clear because our invested capital of 5 million dollars you have made a profit of 13 and a half million dollars so your return on invested capital is 270 percent this is clear yes. okay so that is the importance of that figure now where does system edge come in what is another way of arriving at the estimated gross profit so this gross profit is an important number this is only shown estimated because this is an, this is an ex ante calculation okay now what is another way of arriving at the same 13 and a half figure that is you take the system edge in this case system edge is 75,000 what is the total number of trades 180 trades you do not multiply the system edge with only the winning trades you multiply it with the total number of trades okay so if you do this basically 75,000 75 yeah 75,000 you can see here if you do 75,000 into uh, 180 you will get this okay if you do here uh, as a test you'll get the same 13 and a half million is this clear okay so one gross profit you understand it's a very important concept add up all your losing trades add up all your winning trades and hopefully the winners are more than the losers so you have winners minus total winners minus total losers is your gross profit that you divide by the invested capital that is your return on invested capital very important number for a fund another way of arriving at the gross profit is to look at the system edge and multiply it by the total number of trades so the system edge is basically just the probability weighted average outcome of your system so the concept doesn't change because it is still the mathematical expectation so when we say that mathematical expectation is nothing but a probability weighted average outcome okay but it's a probability it's a weighted average where the weights are the probabilities so similarly this is a mathematical expectation of your trading system so the probability weighted average outcome of your system is seven thousand five hundred dollars or what is it 75 75 thousand dollars if you multiply that by the total number of trades you have done you get another way of getting at the gross profit yes clear okay so now this is why i just wanted to bring refresh as you can see you guys have lost a lot of this so, so these concepts should have been already internalized totally okay these are important calculations in running uh, in running a fund which uh, and, mo and you will not find these in any textbook so you it's better you internalize all this stuff here okay so now now why why did i discuss system edge because i wanted to make sure that you don't get depressed just because the hit rate of most systems is quite low percentage winners for most systems is quite low this percentage losers for most systems as i told you for myself when i'm budgeting at the beginning of the year i always put this as 75 although i've never had 75 percent but i always make it very very ultra conservative okay so 75 percent losers and that's how i work so generally most systems will have a pretty high lose loss rate anywhere between 60 to 70 percent okay so you should be but doesn't matter okay even if you have let's say if you have 75 percent loss rate the point i'm trying to show you here is why you don't have to get depressed even though your percentage losers are very high 
okay all right but if you can maintain what is r3 remember r3 why it's still possible even with a high loss rate it's still possible to make good money if you are able to capture big trends are you following what discussion we are having now are you seeing the relevance of the discussion yes why is it what is r3 you forgotten what r3 is yeah so r3 is can you be more specific ratio between profit and loss is fine it's a layman's answer can you be more specific in terms of actual variables yes average win by average loss that's the answer i was looking for okay so r3 basically is average win by average loss maybe see let's see if we have an answer here target r3 here that's the input figure that we have but essentially here we can just go back to this system in this system what is our average loss average loss is here okay 41.667 so our r3 is and what is the average win $250,000 okay and average loss is 41 so r3 actually for this system is we can even increase this a little bit and see it's exactly six okay so there was one question for you on the end in terms where the r3 was required to be derived it was came out to be 13.5 or something like that okay but that's not important but the main thing is that to do these calculations your concepts about all these things should have been very clear okay so that question only sizing sakshi jain and tarun got right i think or maybe sushi also got it right i'm not sure but uh, that question very few people got right although it had been done in the class but you have to internalize these concepts so that you are totally uh, clear about all these things this is not so complicated it's not like i'm teaching you nuclear physics or something like that it's just something new so obviously if i'm teaching you something new you have to study it properly then you have to revise it through three times and only then does it get internalized it's not so complicated so quite simple calculation i'm sure you do these calculations anyway in your daily life similar calculations but you have to be clear about what we are doing because you are, these are all important concepts which are, there are concepts also involved like you have to know what system edge is right so now you see the r3 of this system is six okay so if you get even if you give the system 75 percent loss rate okay the point i'm trying to illustrate is that you can still have your total profit of the system will be high if your system edge is good if you have a high system edge if you have a high system edge figure that means even then uh, even with a high loss rate if you have a high system edge figure then you'll still make a decent amount of money is that clear because your total gross profit is system edge into number of trades yes or no total gross profit is system edge into number of trades right so if you do a reasonable number of trades and you have a high system edge you will still make a decent amount of money the point i'm trying to show you here that system edge can be high even if percentage loss is low as long as the percentage average win essentially r3 another way of saying r3 is basically relationship between average win and average loss okay if you have a high r3 which means basically on average if your average win is much bigger than your average loss okay then you will still make money even if you can still make money if even if your percentage losers are low uh, percentage losers are very high are you following yes so in this spreadsheet if you go back to the spreadsheet what we are showing is percentage losers is very high 75 percent you have 180 trades but because the uh, what is the average system edge you can see now has dropped earlier we were looking at $75,000 now it has dropped to $31,000 but still the point is when the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that typically a layman when he sees a system with a very high uh, loss rate 75 you notice have you noticed this when you're looking at charting websites there are ads coming up internet ads they are trying to sell you systems uh, others is falling asleep you have to do some Rajasthani puppet style some activity on him come let's have some movement come here come and sit here what happened you're leaving okay okay okay, okay. all right okay come here so that you will not fall asleep you get some movement okay all right okay so uh, where were we now so you can see here that the loss rate is very high okay 75% loss rate but still we have a positive system edge 
do you see that tuma oh the point i was trying to where, where i uh, got lost was most people when they look at a high loss rate system with a high loss rate they'll think this is a bad system not necessarily so you have to really look at the system edge one of the important things you have to look at the system edge okay and uh, you'll notice that what i'm saying is when you go to these kind of websites right like this you're using a market website they'll give you some ads and you'll see very often people are selling ads on uh, you know like here you see some ads sometimes okay you'll see that people are selling um, uh, systems they are selling trading systems with a very high win percentage you should be able to detect this for yourself so that you are not fooled like ordinary people normally what happens is when system people are selling trading systems because they want you to buy the stuff obviously they are going to make you believe that it's good by showing you that it has a very 80% accuracy if you see most of the time when people discuss trading systems they say oh your system 80% accuracy great system that doesn't really mean necessarily you know guarantee anything because if you are have a uh, it the r3 is also important the relationship between average win and average loss okay which is basically so that the point i'm trying to illustrate is that are you following did you get what i said so if your average one in relation average win in relation to average loss is very high even with a high percentage loss you can have a high system edge okay which is what you see here because the r3 is 6 okay the r3 is 6 which is average win by average loss okay because the r3 is 6 therefore even though the uh, percentage loses is very high the system edge is still a decent system edge and you're still making 113% on your risk capital on your invested capital this is clear normally when the point i'm trying to illustrate is that the average person who does not have this understanding of r3 and system edge will look at a 75% losing loss rate system and say oh it's such a bad system but that doesn't that is not a correct assessment that is not the right way to assess the system that's what i'm saying similarly a system that has a high that has a low loss rate this doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good system okay so that's what i was saying it's a long discussion but it's important to have the discussion because i started out by saying that you have to trust your instinct most uh, quantitative predictive mathematical predictive models will not have a high error, uh, uh, win rate okay forecast accuracy will not be high that's why you have risk management which is very important risk management becomes very important and part of the risk management and the return management also is managing this okay and where does this dynamic come from between the average where does this six number come from where does this six number come from remember bracket orders let's do a quick recap of of basic uh, trading mechanics suppose i'm going long dollar swiss over here okay let's say we make this uh, even bigger let's make it a bigger view what happened so it's, it's a very slow pc now suddenly okay so let's say my view on dollar swiss is bullish okay uh, which is it is actually bullish okay so now suppose i go long at market at 9970 okay 9970 i'm going long at uh, dollar swiss at market okay so if i'm going going long dollar swiss what am i going long swiss or dollars dollars right so dollars is the base currency here so dollar swiss i'm going uh, long us dollars and let's say my stop is at 0.9 okay 0.9 is my stop and i go long here so where does this r3 dynamic remember so one of the things we can do is we can place a bracket order kind of structure where we have a stop here and a take profit somewhere right remember that okay so one of the decision problems which we never really address we didn't have time to address in doing while doing ipm is where should i place the uh, take profit order because we discuss using a trailing stop and things like that but one of the decision problem for those who don't want to place a trading uh, to use trailing stops and you want to use targeted take profit orders right so one of the question then you have to decide where should i place the take profit do you realize that becomes another decision problem yes okay so that's where this ex ante planning comes in suppose you are planning out the system okay suppose you are projecting the system will have 75% loss rate and you are projecting that you will do 180 trades and you have figured out with your other type of calculation you have arrived at the average loss which is based on your total risk the distribution of losing trades okay and plus 1 etc with that you have arrived at the average loss 
now so obviously you when you decide the position size for this for this trade I'm going to go along at 99.70 and I'm going to stop at 0.99 okay so I will make sure that my position size is such that I don't lose more than this $42,000 on that trade are you following what is the role of the average loss guideline average loss the maximum loss guideline which we are taking as average loss the role of that figure is that when I decide my position size I'm buying at 99.70 and stopping out at 99 so I'm losing 0 0.007 okay 0 0.007 then what is the amount of dollars that I can afford to buy given that I should my loss should be equal to only $42,000 okay so I will also adjusting for the fact that the loss when you calculate the loss initially it will come in Swiss francs yes. so you have to convert that into dollars right are you following the logic okay so the role of this figure is it helps me to decide the position size right but suppose my sis my investor has told me that you need to you need to deliver a hundred and thirteen percent return on invested capital Suppose my investor has told me that I need you to deliver 113% return on invested in the invested capital. Some such discussion will happen in every fund. Okay, maybe not so precise, maybe something around average. Some such discussion you follow, this is a relevant uh, point. The investor will have some expectation. Suppose my investor has told me that I need to deliver 113% return on invested capital. Okay, so that means I'll have to figure out, okay, that 113% return can only come if my R3 is 6 right okay so if my R3 is 6 then in that case what I have to do is basically when I'm setting my this is already determined previous from a previous calculation now when I come here my entry price is determined 99.70 I'm entering at market and I'm exiting at 0.99 I've taken the average loss and made sure that I determined my position size based on the average loss. Okay. Now I have, uh, and this stop is also determined. Okay. Now the question is, where should I put my take profit? Where does that decision, how does that get solved? For that, you use your target R3. Your target R3 is six. Okay. Now remember, position size has already been decided in such a way that going long at 99.70 and stopping at 0.99 will lose only 41.6 thousand dollars okay this is clear now the take profit you decide in such a way that given that your entry is at uh, 99.70 the take profit whatever be the take profit x okay you will set that take profit in such a way that the distance between this 99.70 and this take profit let's say it's one of 104 let's say okay so you will calculate how much swiss franc profit you make if you exit at 104 let's say are you following okay how much Swiss franc profit do you make if you exit if you enter at 99.70 and exit at 1.04 104 means 1.04 okay we can't even see it here okay if we enter at exit at 1.04 take profit then you calculate the Swiss franc profit then divide it by that 1.04 that will come to a dollar figure yes. that dollar figure should be six times the 41.667 because that's your average loss 41.61667 is your average loss and you have this you have calculated that in order to deliver 113 percent return on invested capital you need to have a r3 of six so if your average loss is 41.66 that means your average profit has to be six times this which means this okay so that's why now this is why this is how the r3 helps you to determine we have never really discussed this pro decision problem uh, the solution to, th to this decision problem before so in a way it's a new thing we are discussing today are you following what, what we have just discussed that for those who are not willing to use trailing stops those who want to separately solve the decision problem of exit at profit you remember exit at profit that is one decision problem where should I exit at profit should I be happy with $80,000 profit okay what this system is telling you what these calculations are telling you you followed now how the TP level is to be decided if you do at 104 and you find that the R6 R3 is coming to only 5 that means 1.04 is not high enough you have to go higher are you following if you are trying to exit at 1.04 and you find 
that uh, the once you exit here you calculate the potential profit and you divide that by 41.6 thousand and you find that the multiple is only five but five is not good enough because you need a multiple of six to achieve your 113 percent return right are you following you guys are following okay so that's how the R3 calculation which comes out of your ex ante system uh, calculations that's how the R3 is used to determine the place where you place the star, where do you, the level at which you place the take profit yes is it clear listen to it once again and figure out yes you have a question now uh, sir uh, can I up and drop it, sir? yeah yeah so like uh, we are having an assumption that we will be uh, not having an assumption making an assumption making an assumption that will be uh, uh, that the exit price will be somewhere around 104 that is just a, a trial and error method that is my first trial for my trial and error method i just picked a number arbitrarily we can do this calculation right now let's do it right now so, okay uh, so uh, let's say now we are doing it for a different market okay let's do it here itself because it doesn't matter swiss franc i'm entering at 99.70 okay i'm exiting at 99 okay what is my position size i have to make sure that if uh, okay if i'm exiting at 99 okay whatever is the position size it has to be such that so here it will be let's not do this calculation right now but let's just tell you what what are we going to do we are going to calculate x basically you have the formula already in your spreadsheet right in your in your notes also that whatever is the position size times this uh, times the difference between these two which is 0 0.007 okay position size times the difference between these two will give you a swiss franc loss figure remember that's a swiss franc loss figure because terms asset is swiss franc you have to then divide that by the exiting dollar swiss rate not by 99.70 the exiting dollar swiss rate to arrive at the dollar loss figure and that dollar loss figure should be equal to 41.667 yes this is there already this formula is already there in your sheets okay we are not doing the formula once again because i don't have the uh, sheets in front of me but anyway so we can do we can uh, uh, calculate this all right so we have a dollar figure okay now that dollar figure what are we going to do now let's say this dollar figure is let's um, so if it is let's say let me try and mentally do that this is uh, position size into uh, entry minus exit okay divided by the exit okay is equal to the uh, is a dollar loss okay so if you have dollar loss into exit price divided by entry minus exit okay okay i just didn't okay we so we have dollar loss are you following what we are doing dollar loss into exit price is one thing okay dollar loss into exit price is one thing and we have to divide it by abs of it's nothing it's just the formula that i'm doing I'm just trying to rewrite the formula here. Mentally calculate the formula. This is I need ABS. So let's make an ABS minus. You are following what we are doing? Position size into ABS entry minus exit will be the Swiss franc loss. That divided by the exit price will be the dollar loss. So dollar loss is on RHS. Now I need to basically put the position size into the LHS. So I'm multiplying the dollar loss into the exit price. And then I'm going to divide that by the ABS of the entry minus exit. It's easier if you do it on piece pen and paper, but I'm, I don't have pen and paper, so I'm doing it mentally. Okay. Yeah. So one minute. So ABS of this. So now one sec. Now this should give us the. Now if I take the dollar loss into the exit price and I divide it by the ABS of the entry minus exit, that gives me this dollar figure. Okay. And then if we calculate this, it should come out. Yes. What is your question? Are you following? Uh, yeah, you tell me your question. I'm just I'm listening to you. Of, uh, no, 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 no. We don't know. We are going to do that exercise. 
we don't know because we are i just took 104 as a random number okay uh, i just took 104 as a num random number what am i doing here i am cross checking that figure i got i got a position size figure of 5.8 something i'm cross checking that now i'm taking that position size multiplying by abs of entry minus exit okay then dividing the whole thing by the exit price okay that should be so the correct the figure is correct okay what is this 41.250 okay that is one of the components so it's not a big deal we can make it a little smaller yeah this is we'll make it a little this will be small data instead of big data this will be small data okay are you following now what we did we took our example where we are going long dollar swiss at 99.70 we are exiting at 99 and we are now not we have to deal with that other decision problem what should be my position size uh, Puneet is also, uh, Pulkit is also falling asleep. Uh, what happened to other? She's gone out. Pulkit also come here. Come here. You're falling asleep. Get some activity. Walk around. Do some calisthenics. Run around the class. Whoever's falling asleep, we should make them run around the class. And then <laughs> they'll wake up. So you can come and sit here. Come and sit here next to uh, others. Okay. You'll become more idealistic. If you sit to next next sit next to others okay all right so uh, yes one minute i'm just coming to your question you followed what we did the my, i was going to go long dollar swiss at 99.70 and exit at 99 but i have another decision problem to solve what should be my position size what is the constraint that i have to deal with while deciding this pro, uh, solve decision while solving this decision problem i have a constraint sitting on my head the constraint is my maximum loss must be only 41.6k not and in this case we are setting it although we call it maximum loss so it could be less than that but we are setting the average loss equal to the maximum loss for the sake of simplicity so my loss should be exactly equal to 41.7 K right using that constraint I solve for the position size so here I'm modeling the position size uh, as a function of the entry and exit prices and the maximum dollar loss figure right yes so this is our position size and we have cross checked it to see that it is coming out to the same figure so this position size is correct okay now this is my position size now i still have another problem to deal with that's where your 104 comes in okay that i need to basically uh, having entered at 9970 assuming i don't get stopped then if it keeps on going higher at what point do i exit that's also a decision problem for those who don't want to use trailing stops you need to actively select a limit price this will be a what kind of order limit sell order okay because i've gone long so my take profit will be a limit sell order so when you place a bracket order there will be one will be a stop order and one will be a limit sell one is both are sell orders one is a stop sell one is a limit sell the take profit is a limit sell okay so now the question is what should that limit price be the limit sell order they'll ask you it has one parameter limit order has one parameter which is what is the limit price okay so that we said randomly i took a number 104 we are coming to that now okay so now there also i have a constraint to deal with i can't just randomly decide that i am going to exit at 102 or whatever because i have another constraint to deal with because my investor wants a 13 113 percent return based on the dynamics projected for my system i can only get 113 percent return if i have a r3 of six if an r3 of six with an average loss of 41.7 means my average profit has to be two hundred fifty thousand dollars okay right so now what i have is as i have another equation to set up which we can now actually set up we will we have never done it before which is we have to are you following the problem i have to now write the limit price which is my take profit level my take profit level should be now i have to model the take profit level as a function of my entry price my target profit which is this my target profit is also mechanically derived from the average loss and the target r3 yes where does this 250000 come from come from it is 41.7 into 6 average win is coming given that my r3 needs to be 6 okay so therefore given that my average loss is 41.7 my average win has to be 250k okay 
you can check it once again that if you do um, 6 into average loss you will get 250k is this clear okay so now what I have to do is now I have another prop so what do I have to do in layman's terms in plain English you see how you move from plain English to a mathematical model okay so in plain English what is my problem I need to figure out what is that level 101 102 103 105 what what is that level at which I will achieve a R3 of 6 <coughs> which is another way of saying that I need to achieve a total profit of 250,000 okay so now I have to model then that, that level that I'm looking for that is actually the limit price level for my sell limit order which is my take profit order that price that I'm looking for so now I have to monitor now I have to model the limit price level as a function of the uh, position size the entry price and the target take pro targeted profit targeted absolute profit on the trade this is clear okay are you following we are not following clearly i think maybe punit also should come next to <laughs> we have separated him from his buddy you know so now his brain is not working half his brain is working yes okay yeah what is your question are you following the structuring of the problem it's yeah uh, except the question uh, sorry yeah i i delayed your question sorry yeah go ahead the, uh, profit amount uh, told uh, or uh, requested by uh, investor everything is done on assumption basis that yeah see in this what i'm saying is this is an ex ante analysis that's why i said when you talk about things like system edge percentage losers there is a ex ante and there is an ex post because see when you are trading in the when you are going forward and trading when you do these you have to do these calculations at the beginning of your trading period because otherwise how will you know what is the average amount you should be risking on a trade so there is an ex ante planning that has to be done planning obviously always is ex ante okay so the ex ante analysis has to be done now after the period is over you can also do an ex post analysis you should actually and compare that I was budgeting for a average loss rate of 75% what was my actual realized average loss rate maybe the over the last one year I've only had a loss rate of 61% uh, but the, although I had budgeted for 75% that's okay but the reverse is not okay you should not budget for 61% loss rate and then have 75% loss rate that's why you want to budget very conservatively with a high loss rate so that your loss rate is always less than your budgeted okay profit should be more than budgeted okay so are you following so this is an ex ante analysis because you need to do that otherwise how will you know what is your average risk per trade this is the most important number in any kind of risk book management any kind of fund management situation actually this is the most important number and how you determine using this number to constrain your position size see this one this trade that we are doing 99.70 buy dollar swiss stop loss at 99 figure okay that 9900 is called 99 figure that the fact that the position size here can't be more than 5.8 million and it's coming out of this number okay this is the most important aspect of your risk management making sure that your position size is controlled to make sure that average loss numbers are not broken and then of course having the stop order in the market so that your actual uh, actually also in in practice the order is uh, executed when it goes below 99 don't just watch it from the sidelines because when it's when you're losing money okay that's why i told you before i think that always stop orders must be always in the system they must be placed into the system okay because if you are watching when the market is going through 99 and you're losing money you may not have the guts to pull the trigger okay so you will freeze sometimes because you realize that when you take the when you pull the trigger and exit you you realize a loss of 41.7k okay you may not want to realize that loss so you will hesitate these are all the human weaknesses that come in so you have to basically that's why the rule is that you should put the order into the system okay and not disturb it yes uh, can we change our assumptions while trading like yeah, i have made an assumption i am going for 75 percent cost uh, and during uh, the trading period i am observing that okay the market is going on a good rate and i can change my assumptions no actually i i would recommend that you don't you can always change it nobody's stopping you okay like you can always eat 10 uh, eggs for breakfast okay but the point is uh, that you should not do it 
because for any this remember yeah, I use the word trading period I'm not saying uh, uh, trading year or trading quarter I'm giving a general definition of trading period so as a basic uh, as a matter of discipline you should not change it within the trading period okay so if you want you can work with let's say even a quarterly trading period so that's a reasonably tight period of time so based on your first quarter's experience you may want to change the ex ante assumptions for the second quarter but as a rule inside the trading period you should not change it because that that is taking you into the domain of arbitrariness this is just like when we say that the students cannot come out before uh, come in must enter the hall before 15 minutes but then pulkit comes uh, with uh, only 13 minutes to go but we say okay pulkit fine come come this is arbitrariness okay it's because we already declared now if we want to change that rule we can change it rule we can change the rule in the next semester okay so as a basic system you should never change your rules within the system within the period for which the rules were designed okay are you guys following the discussion so far yes okay so now what i have to do is i still have this other problem that where should i place my Where is the, uh, the data is now it needs you to look at it otherwise it, okay so what is the other decision problem that I have I so what we were getting at is I was trying to lead you from the decision problem and the layman statement of the decision problem into a, a, a actual mathematical model where you are modeling the position you are modeling the limit price level for the take profit order as a function of the position size the target absolute amount of profit and the entry and exit prices this is clear so let's write that equation first in your because we have never written this equation okay let's write this equation first maybe we can copy from some of these then never mind we'll just write it again i'm always looking to copy and save myself some work okay we are in a totally different kind of discussion today from what was actually planned um yeah this we have already discussed okay this is what we had today okay today is 1410 okay so we are having a lot of discussions about uh, um, high loss rate of predictive models See what is the message we gave? Still okay if R three is high. Yes, this is the message we gave you today. Even if your predictive model has a high loss rate, that is um, percentage loss. <coughs> percentage losers. Okay, still okay if the R three is high. Yes. Okay. Now, what are we discussing? Let's put the formula here. Modeling the limit price. Modeling limit price for take profit order. Yes. Okay. As function of remember, this is how you have to use the lingo. Okay. Modeling the limit price. Typically, whatever you are modeling is in the LHS. Typically. You can always put it in the RHS also, but usually we put it on in the LHS. Uh, so uh, modeling the limit price for the take off break on one side of the equation, basically. So as a function of, okay, function of one position size two is what is the next one? Entry price, okay, and. Uh, we can't put the exit price because the exit price is what we are modeling. Remember, the exit prices are unknown. Should we exit at 102, 103, 105? That's our unknown. Okay. So entry price and what is the third one? Targeted, targeted absolute uh, profit on trade. Okay, and this also is coming out of this. I don't need to write because you should watch the video. Targeted absolute profit on trade in turn is derived from average loss times targeted R3. That 250,000 that we need to make on the on this trade as profit is coming out of the six of R. The R3 is equal to six 
and the average loss is equal to 41.7 okay so this stuff is in your notes i'm writing it in your notes so you don't need to write this you need to understand it follow what we are doing how we are going from an actual decision problem you can identify with the decision problem yes you can see the decision problem that since you have gone long and you're not getting stopped but the market keeps on rising at what point do you take your profits that's a decision problem that should not be take decided arbitrarily that is also to be decided in a structured manner as to be consistent with the rest of your system okay so therefore you have to now model the exit price the limit price on the take profit order as a function of your position size entry price targeted absolute profit on trade what should happen how should we write it okay let's write it this way your this is the let's write it as exp exit price this exit price is going to become our uh, limit price uh, the the parameter for the limit order okay the limit price for at which we will sell the exit price what happened you've gone back to your own place huh? okay all right so the exit price now the exit price is equal to okay let's let's like first we should, we should write one thing let's write the um, okay let's just instead of writing abs profit let's just write profit what is the profit profit is equal to position okay into um, ENP minus actually I should write it in some other way um, EXP this way so into ABS uh, ENP minus are you following what we are doing what is going to be first i'm going to write the profit and then i'm going to uh, interchange and and come to the take the uh, position take the exit price into one side okay so the profit on the, the trade is going to be position size times absolute difference between enp and exp yes and what else into this and divided by divide divided by the whole thing has to be divided by yes exit price the whole thing has to be divided by exp because this is what market are we trading dollar swiss so dollar swiss what is the terms asset swiss franc so profit and loss is always in the terms asset remember that if you ever forget remember when you are going and trading sugar if you are buying 100 tons of sugar at 20 rupees and selling 100 tons at 35 rupees your profit is measured in not in sugar but in rupees yes okay so profit is always and when you're trading sugar what is the terms asset in india when you're trading sugar indian rupees okay so from that you should be able to remember that profit is always in pnl is always in the terms asset so here the pnl is in swiss franc so gulati are you following that therefore this is not sufficient to write profit is equal to position because this profit is dollar profit this profit we are talking about is dollar profit so the position is the total or the average no 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 this position is what we determined here remember we determined that the position can only be this here this 5.8 the position can only be 5.8 because if i'm entering at 99.70 and exiting at 99.00 uh, okay if these are my entry and exits and i don't want and my loss should be exactly equal to 41.7 then that is only possible if my position size is 5.8 so that's the position I'm dealing with now because that's what I've entered. Now the market has started to move in my favor. At what price should I exit to be consistent with the rest of my system? Okay. So uh, therefore, now it started to go up. Where should I exit? And therefore, I'm modeling. I don't know the answer to that. I need to derive a structured answer to that. So I have to model the uh, limit price for the take profit order as a function of the position size, the entry price and the targeted dollar profit on the trade okay and the targeted dollar profit on the trade is coming from the uh, required r3 times the average loss that two fifty thousand dollar target that we have for this trade profit target for this trade that is a function that is coming from six times 41.7 k which is our average loss because the target required r3 is six are you following 
okay so this is the dollar profit per trade because our risk capital is in dollars okay now if it is risk capital is in euros then you replace this with euros yes sir like you just said that it's uh, some sort of difficult for us to put a limit order so can't we use a bracket order first limiting it and getting no 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 bracket order you can use typically in TWS bracket orders they take only with limit price entries okay so let's say that the market was at 1 when you entered a limit order at 9970 you would have entered a limit buy order at 9970 when the market was at 1 and along with that limit buy order you would have also entered a bracket order so that as soon as the limit order got filled to enter the two bracket orders would be live one would be the sell stop at 9900 and one would be the take profit limit sell order at whatever price you set it at 102 103 105 whatever that limit price order is what we are trying to figure out because we don't know what it is because it can't be decided arbitrarily it has to be decided as to be consistent with the rest of your system to meet your system goals okay because remember your investor wants a 113 percent return that requires you to have a six per six r3 of six so which means on average your profit your profitable trade should return two hundred fifty thousand dollars on average so which means on this trade also you have to shoot for $250,000 profit. Now what is the limit price order? What is the price level at which if you exit that you will earn $250,000? That's what we are trying to find out, right? So we have to model it. We don't know it. We are modeling. So first for that we are writing it this way. But this is not complete. What else do we need? Divided by the exit price. Divided by the exit price, okay? So now we have a dollar, this gives us the dollar profit, okay? Now what we have to do is we have to take this exit price out on one side, okay? So what do we do here? We take, uh, this is divided by this, okay? Let's take the exit price to one side. We can write this as, of course this is easier to do on the board, okay? We can write this in the next, Aurora, are you following? Yes, okay. So the exit price goes to the, uh, it will be 1 by exit price, no? No, is it divided by exit price? So the exit price goes to the left? Yes? Hmm? No, uh, yeah, into profit, we'll straight away bring the profit down, okay? Uh, and then we will take one, 1 by profit, okay? We'll take the profit down. Is this so? Am I doing it correctly? Please tell me if I'm wrong also because this is a very odd way to do equations. Writing it on the Google Docs. Actually, just switch the position with the price It's okay. We'll do, uh, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying that you guys can actually doing it, uh, can do it better. So what are we doing? But we have to take out this exit price, no? We have to take out the exit price from here also. That's another problem, no? So we have to open this bracket. So one by profit is fine, but we have to now write this as one by profit into basically it's one by profit into this. You can remove AVS. No, it's an extra value. Huh. We can remove this. Yeah, okay. We can remove this. So I'm just writing it to the that is how we should write it. Um, we'll just ignore the sign basically when it comes, okay? So we'll remove this in now. Uh, we can write remove that pull kit's request. We'll write it here. Okay. So now here, help me with opening the brackets. Position into entry price minus position into exit price. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, you're right. We're removing in this kind of. Guy. So basically, we write this as. Well, once again, we write this as stepwise because other our dear friends who are missing today, they should be able to follow it. <laughs> because I'm not going to discuss this again. We have to move quickly. You have to revise quickly from. Okay, so position into position into entry price. So let's write this. Okay. All right. Position into entry price. Let me remove this. Okay, we'll write it with nice third brackets. Uh, minus is this correct everybody Gulati is this correct we have opened the bracket we have removed that absolute so it was only position into entry price minus exit price so we have opened the bracket and written position into entry price minus position to exit price this is okay okay so one by profit into position into entry price minus position into exit price okay so what do we do position into exit price so we take this here okay
okay so this we rewrite this turning into a maths uh, algebra class basic algebra class okay never mind but this is what you have to do okay we are going to remove this from here we are going to bring it here and here also you know you have to be very careful because sometimes you can just make mistakes those calculations which were given to you during the exam they required you to be familiar with the theory also very clear about the theory but also you have to be very meticulous many of you forgot to adjust for the swiss franc pnl just straight away calculated your brain has to be switched on all the time right yeah you have done it no so we'll write it but i'm just doing it here so this will go here we are moving this to the left okay then one by profit into this right So we can take uh, exit price common from that. Uh, yeah, so that's what we'll do, no? So now we will write this as exit price. We'll write in baby steps so that everybody's clear about it, no? Exit price, we'll write it as into, into, uh, plus. yeah. We'll write it as one minus position. One, uh, one plus position. Sorry, one plus position, okay, yeah. One plus position and we will just remove this okay so one plus position now we are okay all right okay so now we can rewrite this as uh, exit price and we'll take the one plus into we'll divide this right so we'll take this we'll put this this bracketing is not correct actually um, this bracketing is not correct uh, but uh, my sequencing of the brackets is not correct. We had we have to divide it by one plus position. Am I correct? Okay. Yeah, profit. So this becomes essentially that this becomes profit into position. This becomes plus profit into e position. Okay. It's a little harder for me to see because I'm doing it in this odd way. But yeah, it is profit into position. So it is essentially what is the RHS? Position into entry price divided by profit into position. Is that correct? Okay. So then we can write now. So what is our exit price? We have to write it as profit into, but we have to just see that the removal of the uh, absolute value does, is it likely to create any kind of problem? Here the exit price is a higher than the entry price. Yeah, it will not create a problem. So the removal of the absolute value should not create any problem. So uh, we, what is our exit price? Position into ENP, let's write it as position. What is your position is here, right? What is your ENP? 99.70 yes that's keep it here that's one how did this become okay fine and we have to divide it by uh, profit into position no, sir. One plus position into profit. yeah sorry one plus position into profit yeah see this is where you might yeah see this is one plus profession position into profit so is equal to what is the uh, one minute one minute one minute yeah okay so profit is what profit is two hundred fifty thousand dollars okay into one plus position position is here is that correct position this is our position 5.8 that's the position we took no one minute one minute see that's why we have to be careful because we are doing it in a very odd way so this was one one so this was one by profit into this thing okay then so we have to do it and actually with this better because i'm getting very confused with the by doing it here okay so one minute let's look at it once again okay your time is up but you understood what has to be done this you can do on your own okay this you can do on your own if you do it on a on an exercise book it's much clearer the brackets are much clearer because i also did not sequence correctly i put the second bracket uh, before the third bracket uh, i put the third bracket before the second bracket yeah so i didn't put it correctly so anyway so uh, just do it yourself but you understand this in this manner we can model the limit price but what you can understand is that the exit price on profit is not something that has to be arbitrarily decided but it should be 
uh, determined in a structural manner as a part to be consistent with your system. We will do a quick recap in the next class, but please make sure that those of you who are falling asleep plus those who are not here, they do a quick review, review, okay? Because we can't repeat everything in the same class. You have to watch the video, right? Yes? What happened? Yes? No, no, we'll simplify it. Don't worry, we'll simplify it. We'll simplify it. Okay, we'll figure out the, uh, we'll, we'll do it again in the next class. We will quickly wrap up. I won't repeat things in the next class, but we will quickly wrap up. But it didn't answer your questions. But the question that you're having, Kushpu is saying that she's not able to figure out how to trade. But that problem should not be there. Go and watch the videos once again. You have been very given very clearly structured decision problems. And we have been, we have given you very clear rules. Okay. It, to some extent, these rules are a little bit simplistic because this theta is a time to expire as a function of time to expiration. Strictly speaking, that is only for at the money options. So I've made certain simplifications to give you a structure. In real life, there's no such clear cut structure, but you can use the structure. The structure is not, it's not going to take you very much off uh, track and it will give you some structure. So the, you go through the way we solve. I've given you clear cut ways to solve each of the problems. Yes. Go and revise again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there is a real, uh, there is actually, a, it's coming out of the formula, but we'll check it, you can come, you can come. We'll check it again, it's coming out of the formula, okay, it's coming out of the formula, but we'll check it again, uh, but in fact the formula seems, I, I'm going to check that formula once again, it's, it, these are all partial derivatives, okay, these are all partial derivatives, so from the structure of the formula you can see that one number will be always higher or number always lower, okay, who has been, so Kriti has switched it off, you're feeling cold, no, no, that's okay, that's, I'm going anyway now, okay, so so I'll, I'll look at that in more detail and, and, and come back to you. Yes. So the formula is really very really it's simplified. Right? We just have to write and then one upon one plus position. And it will be done. Okay, we'll, we'll do it next time again. I'll also go and look at it. Because I'm also looking at it, you know, it's very difficult to do uh, things when you... It just need to be written as one upon one plus position. And it will be done. Where are you saying one upon so one plus? Yeah. You can write it in a way. Here. One upon one plus position. Like no, because one here one we are profit. one minute, one minute. We are writing one upon profit, so we can write it as one upon one plus position. Okay. Into one upon one plus position, and it will be done. We are dividing here by one plus position, so which is into one plus, yeah, which is divided into one upon one plus position. Yeah, so we, uh, no, no, I this, then, no, you are saying that divi instead of dividing by one plus position, into you will one multiply one by one upon one plus position. So one, we no. state that one upon profit is also being divided by this. Okay, I'll check it. I'll check it when we go there. It's easier to see it on the exercise book. <laughs> one is not ex used to doing uh, equations like this. Yes. Okay.